Welcome to Sunday School at Cedar Lane United Methodist Church. During the next three months, we will be learning about faith. In June, Jesus um, will teach us about faith in the books of Matthew and, and Luke. July will explore faith and salvation from the book of Romans. We will study faith that the faith that gives us hope in the month of August. Now, we in the United States put a lot of stock in our freedom. There has been a lot of controversy during this time of pandemic concerning what authority the boards of health, governors, mayors, or councils exercise to protect public health. Can they moderate face masks, mandate face masks, business occupancy, so on and so forth? Basically, it is a question of what it um, uh, what takes precedent, individual rights or the common good. So all of this is about the freedom granted in our constitution, but all of us know that there are things in our lives that put us in a bondage that is far worse than having to wear a mask. Fear, which most of us have experienced uh, this past year in one form or another is one of those things. We experience and range from the butterflies and excitement of doing something new and unfamiliar to the phobias which produce debilitating panic attacks. And one expression of fear is worry. And that is what Jesus is addressing in our lesson today. Jesus is in the middle of the Sermon on the Mount when he begins to address an audience who would have had to work hard just to provide for their daily needs of food and clothing. And if we could, um, would we read Matthew 6, 25 through 27? Therefore, I tell you, do not worry about your life what you will eat or drink, or about your body, and what you will wear. Is not life more important than food, and the body more important than clothes? Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? Who of you by worrying can add a single hour to his life? What's the purpose of worry? What, is, what do we think it does? And I, I think the end game for that is survival. What are the two of the things that we need for survival? Food and clothing. And Jesus tells them not to worry about that. Now, life for common folks was tough in the first century. Now, consider just, for example, how clothes were made. The sheep had to be raised, then sheared, the wool combed, and then spun by hand, then those fibers woven in on hand looms into cloth, and finally the cloth, the cloth was cut into clothes, and they were then sewn together. And if that wasn't bad enough, you think about linen, that was even worse. Um, definitely not easy. So everything that happened took a lot of time and a lot of effort. There were no refrigerators or freezers, which we are so used to. And so what do you do to store food for more than just a few days at a time? What do you do, or do during the winter when there are no crops? You get the picture. It would be very easy to worry a lot for the common man. How do we get the stuff that we need to live? But then Jesus asked him an extraordinary question. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothes? Life is more than just subsistence. With that, he begins to draw their attention to how their heavenly father provides the bird for the birds. Jesus is setting up an if this, then that argument. He argue, argues from the lesser to the greater, 
If your heavenly father provides for birds that can't raise crops or store anything in barns, then will he not provide for you since you are much more valuable than birds? Now, this is not an excuse to be lazy or not work. Even the birds have to seek out their own food. They don't get to sit on a branch and have a hand from heaven bring them the food. So here, the scripture actually commands us to work. Now, the Thessalonians must have had some characters among their midst. Um, Paul got exasperated enough to tell them, if a man will not work, he shall not eat. And that's in 2 Thessalonians 3.10. Jesus' point is that the Lord is the source for all we have. Yes, we are diligent in our efforts, but it is God who gives the increase. We need to give up trying to control everything by our will and determination, our worry, if you will. We can trust our Lord to provide what we need and more. In verse 27, the word hour can refer to either time or height. So it says, add one hour to our life, or it can be and has been translated as add one cubit to our height. Well, my kind of made, my kind of crazy mind threw these two together. And I wondered how long it would take light to travel 18 inches. That's the length of the cubit. Now, if the calculations I found online are correct, that's a big if, it takes approximately 1.5 nanoseconds um, or 1.5 billionth of a second for that light to travel that 18 inches. If you can't add one billionth of a second to your life. How are you going to control anything else? And I, I, I know that's out of context a little bit. I just thought it through and went, wow, we can't. So Matthew 6, 28 through 30. You're muted, Mike. Still muted. Sorry. I am. No, I'm not. And why do you worry about clothes? See how the flowers of the field grow? They do not labor or spin. Yet I tell you that not even Solomon in all his splendor was dressed like one of these. If that is how God clothes the grass of the fields, which is here today and tomorrow is thrown into the fire, will he not much more clothe you, you of little faith? Once again, Jesus is making the argument from the lesser to the greater. If God took his such care in making the flowers, which have such a limited life, if he took that amount of care to make them so beautiful, will he not make much more provide a covering for his people? More than once in the Gospels, Jesus used the phrase, you of little faith about his disciples. How much faith does it take? Faith as little as a mustard seed can move a mountain. Some days I feel like mine is as small as that nanosecond we talked about a little earlier. But our faith can grow through reading and studying the Bible. Jude in verse 20 tells us to build yourselves up in your most holy faith and pray in the Holy Spirit. In my experience, faith is either growing or it's waning. It can't be stagnant. So, you know, you can't just hold play. Let's read verses 31 through 34, if you would, please, Priscilla. So do not worry, saying, what shall we eat or what shall we drink or what shall we wear? For the Pagans would run after all these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them. But seek first his kingdom 
and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. In these verses, Jesus goes from telling them of what not to do, don't worry, to what to do, seek first his kingdom. He tells them they don't need to run after food and drink or clothes. That's the way the world lives. And I'm going to use an example from our life. In 1980, Mary and I moved to Broken Arrow, Oklahoma, so that I could go to Bible school. We both drove school buses for the local system, school system, to support ourselves. And when school was out, we both got summer jobs. Um, money was, needless to say, very tight. Generally, our new clothes came as kiss Christmas gifts from our families. Um, now, our next door neighbor was a retired school teacher who was also going to Bible school. And from time to time, she would go back to Texas, meet up with her sister, and they would go shopping for clothes. And on more than one occasion, they would come back and say, oh, we don't care for this piece or that piece. And they would ask Mary to try it on. And of course it fit. And they would just give it to her. And to this day, I still can't comprehend how God provided for us through all of it. Our Father wants a relationship with us, but we have to work at it. We have to seek his kingdom and his righteousness. We need to put first things first. We seek the one who is able to supply all of our needs through Christ Jesus. We're not less secure for doing so. We are actually more secure because we then recognize that it is God who is the source of all things. I've heard many discussions about this supply your needs, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna give an opinion, take it for what it's worth. As one guy once said, have as much a sense as an old cow, eat the hay and leave the sticks. If you don't agree, leave it alone and move along. Um, some have made a lot about these scriptures actually saying God will just give you exactly what you need. Um, and in some way, it limits him to only that. And I'm not so sure that God only wants us to have just exactly what we need and nothing more. Because if that were the case, then we would have nothing left over. We would not be able to be generous in our giving. In 2 Corinthians 9, 6 through 15, Paul is absolutely adamant about God being able to bless us abundantly so that we can abound in every good work and be generous on every occasion. Now, there are many other scriptures, even some with what Jesus said. And I invite you to study them, look at them for yourself. But the point I'm trying to make is we don't seek the gift. We seek the one who gives the gift. And let him handle the rest of it. I just, I just want us to not put, but try to put God in a small box that he can't get out of, we think he can't get out of. Now, Jesus is not talking about making plans for tomorrow or next week or next year. He's talking about being so wrapped up in worry about what will happen tomorrow that you miss today. In colloquial terms, the person who worries is not present in today so that they can rejoice and be glad in the day that God has given to it. Galatians 5 reads, it is for freedom that Christ has set you free. Stand firm then and do not let yourselves be burdened again by a yoke of slavery. Notice that that says, 
Do not let yourself. It's going to take some work, but God does not want us to worry. He will provide for us. And I have one other scripture, which I think we all know quite well, which is from Philippians 4, verses 6 and 7. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Thank you for being with us today. We hope you will join us next week. God bless.